Good evening again, Saints. Pastor Marvin Tigner, Fellowship Baptist Church. So good to be with you again this evening. God continues to bless us, guide us, and direct us. And so uh, this evening we want to continue with our discussion with regard to comforting God's people. Um, it's interesting that the television news uh, and the media outlets continue to talk about how people are struggling during uh, these COVID-19 times and domestic violence is up and suicides are up and all of those things that have to do with individuals. And so we've been attempting to, during this month of September and October, to talk about those things that might comfort God's people. And so we've uh, used several things. We talked about loving one another and stop beating uh, ourselves up and uh, talking about a caring family even. And we progressed and we're now talking about this whole idea and concept of prayer. If we're going to make it in the world today, we've got to recognize that we need to take care of our personal health, our own spiritual health. And that is fomented and solidified by our prayer life. And so uh, before we get back into that, um, discussion, I do want us to uh, look at our healing and restoration list, and uh, I do want us to continue to be in prayer for uh, Brother Courtney Mays and Keaton Mays, and uh, Brother Marvin Richardson, Sister Ethel Caldwell and family. Again, we uh, funeralized Brother Clarence on uh, last Friday. Please uh, continue to call and send cards and be in prayer for Sister Maddie Johnson, who lost her mother uh, down in Minden, uh, Louisiana. Uh, those who are at home, Sister Jeanette Outlaw uh, had procedures this past week. I want you to be in prayer for her. Be in prayer for Sister Jean Watts, who continues to recoup at home. Brother James Wyatt, Sister Virginia Johnson. And we asked you on Sunday to add to your prayer list, Brother Kelvin Samuels in the Dallas-Fort Worth area who has his entire family that is um, taken with the virus. So continue to be in prayer for all of those. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, I want to read from the um, 85th number of Psalm. Psalm 85, and I want to begin with verse number seven, read down through the end of that uh, psalm, and uh, then we'll get into our study. Show thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints but let them not turn again to folly. Surely his salvation is nigh, them that fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring out of the earth and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Yes, the Lord shall give that which is good and our land shall yield her increase. Righteousness shall go before him and shall set us in the way of his steps. Let us have a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you for uh, blessing your people, blessing us to see another day, blessing us to have the activity of our limbs, blessing us to be in our right mind. And Lord, we just thank you for an opportunity to gather remotely that we might worship you we might praise you, that we might inquire inside of your word. And Father, we're praying for not only the names that have been called, but the names that you know of that we know not of, God. And Father, we know that you're a prayer hearing and a prayer answering, God. We exalt your name even again this evening. We lift your name on high that you might continue to lead, guide, and direct us. Father God, just bless our study this evening. Bless our attempts that we might uh, bring a word in your name. And Father God, we just pray for the salvation of the lost. We pray for the healing of our land. We pray for each individual member of the Fellowship Baptist Church 
and we pray for the church in its entirety at large. Father God, continue to guide us, continue to bless us, continue to lead us as only you can. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Um, before we get into our study this evening, I do want to thank those who participated in our 69th church anniversary. And on this past Sunday, Pastor and wife did celebrate our sixth pastoral anniversary. Um, we didn't have a lot of fanfare. We may have some balloons and some decorations this uh, coming Sunday. This is a very different year for all of us, um, locally, globally, uh, regionally. It's a different time in church. And so um, I appreciate the cards, the letters, the well-wishers, um, all of your acts of kindness. And I thank God for being able to serve these six years at the Fellowship Baptist Church here in Kansas City, Missouri. I pray that we continue on as we go into our seventh year. We're going to need to pivot some things that we're doing. We're going to need to uh, up, step up in some areas where we have uh, began to wane due to uh, not being able to meet. But we'll get all of that taken care of. But again, thank you so much for all of your well wishes with regards to pastoral anniversary. Um, one of the things I told you was going to happen on Sunday as well was uh, yours truly would be installed as the moderator of the uh, Blue River District Association. That did happen on Sunday evening. I thought that it was going to be live streamed. It was not. And so hopefully we'll be able to get some pictures of what was took place uh, up on our uh, website and on our Facebook page. And so uh, thank you for those who have been in support and we'll make sure that we get you uh, some pictures to see what's going on. That is a one year um, uh, assignment, if you will. And so uh, thank you for your support in that area as well. Also this past week, uh, the 14th or the 12th through the 14th, the Missouri Baptist State Convention was convening virtually, and so we had an opportunity to participate with the uh, music group and do a little teaching as well on this past Monday night. And so uh, God continues to bless us. God continues to direct us, and we're going to do everything that we can to lift up the name of our Lord and our Savior. And uh, so let's get into our word. Let's just get into our word this evening. Last week, uh, we began to talk about this whole idea concept of prayer. And if I recall, we talked about uh, what is prayer and we gave uh, some scriptures to uh, define that and to back that up. Uh, and we said our goal in prayer was to cultivate a relationship with our Lord and our Savior. It's, it's simply us pouring out our souls before God. And so we talked about prayer being a communication and communing with God. And we also talked about why we pray. Uh, it reflects our dependence on God. It uh, restores our relationship with God. And as someone else told me this week, Pastor, you forgot to say, one of the reasons we ought to pray, why we ought to pray is because I have so much to thank God for. And that is such a true statement. Uh, each and every day that he allows me to wake up and be here on this earth and to uh, spread the gospel message and to enjoy the activities of my limbs and uh, all of the other things that he has provided for us. There's so many blessings uh, that we just want to thank God for. And so we talked about what prayer is. We talked about why we should pray. We also began to talk about how we should pray. And I believe we uh, left off with Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, verses 6 and 7. We were talking about what we should not do uh, when we pray. And it's uh, probably not the best way to talk about uh, how you should pray, talking about what you should not do. But uh, Matthew 6, 6 tells us, but when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Okay, so we ought to have a prayer closet, and he didn't say, 
he says, when you pray, not if you pray. And so prayer is mandated. It's a commandment for us. God expects us, and Jesus taught that, that we ought to pray. In fact, following these verses here in Matthew chapter 6, we have what's commonly known as the model prayer. Uh, so For so many years, we called it the Lord's Prayer. But here we have the, an assignment of how we ought to pray. And so we shouldn't uh, spend all of our time trying to pray out in public. And I believe verse seven says that. Let me read verse seven. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. And so we ought to have a prayer closet. We ought to have a devotional time. We ought to be able to spend daily time with our God, with our Savior, in communication and in communion with him. And one of the things that I uh, always admonish us to do is make sure we take our Bibles into our devotional time, because not only will God speak to us through his still small voice, he will speak to us and reveal himself through his word, which he continues to do on a daily basis. And so therefore, I'd like for you to have your word with you. He might draw something back to your attention that you missed before or that he wants to put in your life at this point in time. So when we start talking about how we ought to pray, pray in our closets. Don't pray as the hypocrites do in public, trying to use vain repetitions as if those are a magic spell. And and the other thing that Jesus is warning us against is providing simply lip service to God's word. See, when we pray, we pray uh, sincerely and we ought to be praying in our closets. There's an acrostic that I often teach with uh, when we begin to talk about prayer. And it, the acrostic is Acts, A, C, T, S, Acts, Acts. And all of our prayers, even in the model prayer that Jesus gives us, ought to have these four elements found in the prayer itself. A is going to stand for adoration, adoration. And so in our prayers and in our prayer life, make sure that we are giving God the praise that is due him. We want to make sure that God knows that we are praying to him because we know who he is, who he is. And so there's a couple of scriptures that I want you to write down to, uh, to make sure that we have uh, at least this first component in our prayer life. I want us to go to Psalm 145, Psalm 145, verse 3. And it reads, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised and his greatness is unsearchable. Make sure that we are telling God uh, that we love him for who he is. Amen. So often we want to go into prayer and the first thing we want to do in prayer is tell God what I need. God already knows what you need. God wants to know where are you in position to him. And so as we exalt him, as we edify ourselves, one of the things that we want to do is focus our prayer attention on who God is. He is great and greatly to be praised. And he is so great. His greatness is unsearchable. Amen. Amen. While we're right there in Psalm, go to Psalm 147, verse 1. Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant and praise is comely. It's the thing we ought to be doing. Adoring, adoration, the big A, making sure we let God know that we care and we love and we adore what he's doing. Look at verse five right there in uh, Psalm 147 as well. Great is our Lord and of great power. His understanding is infinite. 
We just said that his greatness was unsearchable. Now we un also want you to know that his understanding is infinite. Tell God we understand how big he is. He's the creator of the universe. He holds together all of the living things at, and in his hands. And so when we began to have our prayer life activated, when we began to spend time in prayer, we ought to praise God for who he is. Let me give you a couple of other Psalms that will help you with the whole adoration theme. Psalm 100, the 100th number of Psalm. And I'm not going to read the entire thing for us, but Psalm 100 make a joyful noise. And so God knows that we adore him. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence. Know ye that he is the Lord. And it is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto God. Psalm 100. And also have Psalm 150 in your toolbox. When we began to talk about adoration, we also want to use Psalm 150 as well. And so this acrostic that I want us to learn with regard to prayer life is, first and foremost, make sure we are adoring and praising God before we get to asking for things from God. Amen. Amen. And our prayer life will be greatly enhanced if we can make sure we have these four components in our prayer life. Second one I want you to write down is the C. And C has to do with confession. Confession. Acknowledging our sins before God. Remember we said that one of the reasons we should pray is to reflect our dependence upon God. And so if we're reflecting our dependence upon God, one of the things we need to do is confess our finiteness, confess our sins that we might be able to receive forgiveness from God. When we received eternal life at salvation, we began to establish a relationship. And within that relationship, God wants to commune with us and have communion with us as well and communication with us as well. And sometimes our daily relationship gets broken, much like our relationships here on earth. We can still love somebody and still have friction with them from time to time. Oftentimes we mess up with our relationship with God and God never messes up because God is God. And we can have that discussion at another time if you don't understand what that means. But in our relationship, oftentimes we do some things that are sinful, either by omission, some things that we didn't do, or commission. If commission means that we committed it, we did it and knowingly did wrong. And so in our prayer life, we want to acknowledge who God is. We want to give God adoration, either one of those for A, and then we want to confess our sins confessing our sins to God, that way we can restore our relationship with him and show our dependence upon our relationship with him and not be hindered from receiving our blessings because we have unconfessed sin. Amen. Amen. So adoration, acknowledgement, Second thing we want to, the second component we want to have in our prayer life as we continue to grow is our confession. Confession. Go with me, if you will. Psalm 66. Psalm 66. And I want to look at verse 18. The text says, Psalm 66, 18 says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. If I hide sin in my heart, and one of the things I want you to know is you really can't hide sin from God. God wants you to acknowledge that you know that you sin. All the way back in Genesis, uh, Genesis chapter one, and we see that God uh, created. And then when we get to Genesis chapter two, he comes and asks Adam, where art thou? I'm sorry, Genesis chapter three. Uh, 
Where art thou, Adam? God was not asking Adam where he was because God didn't know. God knew where Adam was. God wanted Adam to acknowledge that he had moved away from him and was not in a position where he should have been. So that's what confessing our sin does for us. It acknowledges that we have uh, messed up and we want to uh, clean up, if you will, uh, what we have done so that God can acknowledge us and to forgive us. Okay, so when we sin, when we sin, um, first, uh, 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 first John, first John, first John one nine. First John one nine. says, if we confess our sins, we just said we need to confess our sins. First John, first John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. He doesn't have to, but he does. If we confess our sins, he will forgive us of our sins. And then it goes on to say, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we need to confess the sins that we've committed that will put us back in position. We can receive his promise when we receive that cleansing from all unrighteousness. And so John, uh, 1 John 1, 9 is something I want you to have in your toolbox as well. Uh, confess your sins and confess them often. Now, don't keep confessing sins and never do anything to stop trying to sin. Uh, just because you say you're sorry all the time doesn't necessarily mean you're sorry if you continue to do the same thing over and over and over again. And so in our confessing our sins, there has to be a uh, element of repentance as well, which is more than just saying, I'm, I'm sorry, but it is uh, us attempting to make sure that we're not doing the same thing again. So uh, acknowledgement, adoration, confessing our sins uh, so that we can claim the victory, we can get the cleansing of all of our unrighteousness in uh, 1 John 1, 9. Talking about confessing sin, I want us to go to 1 Corinthians as well. 1 Corinthians 10. 1 Corinthians 10. Verse 13. This will be powerful for you in your prayer life and in your spiritual life as well. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, There hath no temptation taking you, but as such is common to man. Let me stop right there for a second. All of us so often feel like when I am tempted, the temptation that I have is greater than the temptation anybody else has had. Nobody's ever had this temptation like I've had. It. Scripture tells us no temptation that comes on you is not such as is common to man. Okay, but God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that ye may be able to bear it. When temptation comes, the opportunity to sin shows up. One of the things I need you to know is you're not unique. You're not the only one that was ever tempted that way. Our Lord came into this earth and was tempted as man was, but never sinned. So here we are with the temptation. And the scripture tells us right there in that verse, God is faithful. And so when you're tempted, he provides a way of escape. That's a powerful statement. 
to know that I do not have to sin. That God has made a way for me not to have to sin. That's that's uh, uh, for me personally. When I uh, digested that piece of scripture and understood it. It provided me so much power in my life because now as soon as the temptation comes, I recognize what a temptation is. And I also know I began to look for my way of escape. Amen. Amen. OK, so that you'll be able to bear. It. So back to my original point is we've got to confess our sins in our prayer life so that we can have greater communion with God. Our prayer lives will grow exponentially if we acknowledge and show God adoration and we confess our sins. And so uh, even this evening, think about those unconfessed sins that you're harboring already. Write them down so you have something to pray about later on. Write those down. So I said there was an acrostic. There's the A, adoration, acknowledgement, the C, which is for confession. The third thing or the third component that I want you to have in your prayer life is thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Express our gratitude to God, even in our prayers. And we can express it every time we pray. Amen. Go with me. First Thessalonians. Chapter five. First Thess five. Verse number 18. And it says in everything, give thanks. Fairly clear. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. That's God's will that we would give thanks. And I pray that we would give thanks in everything that we do. It's very clear. And so, adoration, acknowledgement, either or, or both, confession, Thanksgiving. Fourth component that I want you to have. I'm not going to labor on Thanksgiving very long. If you don't know how to show thanks uh, anywhere in Psalms, anywhere in Scripture, anywhere in your life experience, you ought to be able to give thanks to God and show gratitude for the things that he has done for you. When you woke up this morning, that was enough to give God thanks. The fact that you can hear my voice is enough to give God thanks. And so we ought to be giving God thanks for all things in our prayer life, in, in our entire life. So A, adoration, C, confession, T, thanksgiving. S is for supplication, supplication. Supplication is asking for the things that we want or that we feel that we need. Supplication has to do with the items that help us to get through uh, our lives. And so that's the last or the fourth piece of that uh, adoration or that acrostic, I'm sorry, of the acrostic adoration, confession, thanksgiving, supplication. So in supplication, I get to express my desires to God. Let's go to John 15, John 15, John 15, 7. It says, if ye abide in me and my words abide in ye, ye shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. If we are in Christ, we are, um, we have access to his blessings. If we abide in him and his word abides in us, 
we can ask and we shall receive. Now, the beauty of abiding in him is we will not ask amiss. We won't ask for stuff that God doesn't really want for us, because as we commune and communicate with God and our prayer life goes stronger, we'll know what to ask for. He'll, the Holy Spirit will guide and direct us to what to ask for. Verse seven again, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, you shall ask what you will and you shall be done for you. God says we can ask, we can have supplications, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, the asking, the supplication, the what I need. Amen. Amen. While we're here, let's also go to Philippians chapter four. Philippians 4, verse 6. Philippians 4, 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything in prayer and supplication. That's the asking. Be careful for nothing, but everything that's, that you need out there in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God you can ask. It's not a sin to ask God. I just want you to do it the right way. He has physical blessings for you. He has spiritual blessings for you. He has material blessings for you. And so be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Watch verse seven right here in Philippians 4, uh, 6, Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. And the peace of God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And so our prayer lives can be so enriched. We can have comfort. We can comfort God's people. We can have all of those things that we need to make it during these troubled pandemic uh, health crisis times. If your anxiety level is up, you can ask him. If your finances are in trouble, you can ask him. But I want us to have a strong prayer life. I want our prayer life to be strong so that we might be able to fight against the wiles of Satan. This division that he has caused in our nation and in our families, in our homes, in our churches is all satanic. And if we're going to fight it, we've got to comfort one another. We've got to love one another. We've got to be a family towards one another. And in that, we've got to exalt Christ, and we've got to edify each other. We've got to build each other up. The best way for us to continue to build each other up is to have a strong prayer life individually and as a church. And so I thank you for being good prayer warriors. I thank you that you stayed on the battlefield in prayer one for another, that we continue to pray for families, that we continue to pray for ministries, that we continue to pray for ministers. God's not through with us yet. And he wants us to have a good prayer life. Amen. We've talked about what is prayer. We talked about why we should pray. And we're in the meat right now of how to pray. This is the nitty gritty. This is the down and dirty. This is where the rubber meets the road. We must be about prayer. Amen. Amen. I pray I haven't kept you too long this evening. I pray what we've said has been helpful. I pray that we'll continue to have these discussions together. I pray that God's going to continue to bless the Fellowship Baptist Church. I pray that the first six years are just the beginning of something uh, immensely long. I pray for many, many, many more years of service at this location. And Father God, I just thank you for being who you are. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name.
Remember, God loves you. So do I.